Well, Michael, we've seen you deal very adequately with the clays for the grouse, and I, we're pretty fortunate. I'm actually going to see you, and possibly you'll see me, yeah. hopefully deal with some grouse in a two or three weeks' time. Well, I'm really looking forward to it, Barry, and um, we'll be shooting with uh, friends, all friends, and um, I think we're privileged, Barry, in, in, in lots of ways to have uh, to, to uh, live in England, the home, of course, well, Britain, I should say, not England, but although, of course, we've got grouse in England, but to live in Britain and the home of the red grouse. And uh, what a fantastic bird, Barry, it is. Um, the Latin name, by the way, of the, of the red grouse, I'm sure you know, is Lagopus scoticus. And um, I don't think they occur anywhere else in the world except in our, no, in our, on our wonderful moorlands. That's right, uh, north of England, Scotland, uh, very few in Wales and sadly even less in Ireland, but nonetheless, and, Years ago, all the islands. We had them in Somerset, didn't we? And, um, and I, I believe in parts of Wiltshire. Years ago. I, I think, I think the, uh, an actual fact, the, the black grouse, black game, held on longer than red, did, than red days. grouse down in the yeah. south. Mm. The New Forest still had them just on the turn of the century, so I understand. Mm. It's seldom you're in a butt on your own. For one reason, it's such a glorious thing to do, to go grouse shooting. It's also very nice to be accompanied by either, it could be your son, your daughter, your wife, your lovely lady, whatever. It's very nice to be accompanied. So we need to just show a grouse butt, some pretty sort of containing thing. So there are ways of how you handle a gun in a grouse butt, how to, how to close it, load it, and where you put it. And there's also respect for the beaters that walk towards you. But I think first, if you could show us, Michael, how you actually close the gun in the grouse butt and how you're able to shoot it at no danger to anyone else in the butt with you. I guess we have to imagine, Michael, at the start of the grouse drive, at the point it starts, we are certain and then we know there is no one out there, or certainly not for half a mile or so, or wherever they're walking well, at I, the beginning. <laughs> absolutely, Baron. Of course, um, with grouse shooting more than uh, so than any other game shooting, of course, we are shooting into a uh, very flat bird, very often shooting downhill, um, very often shooting in, into the side of a mountain. And it's taken for granted, of course, that it's absolutely safe to shoot. There is no one there. So this is, as I say, one of the occasions when um, uh, birds are shot out in front and maybe sometimes 10 feet off the ground, even 5 feet off the ground. Grouse tend uh, to hug the contours of, of the moor. And so opening and closing the gun on a grouse moor, the gun is very often a uh, closed area, perfectly safe. You may have a stone wall like this in front of you. Uh, you may have um, peat turves in front of you. You don't want to be closing your gun um, into that turf. One of the reasons why you wouldn't not just get the, the, the gun could go up, but it could get blocked, of course, with the, yeah, with the peat turves. And that could be a disaster area. So the guns in a, in a grouse bed are actually closed here. And, it, and, it, and it's... Uh, it seemed to be safe because you we're looking over miles and miles very often of flat uh, moorland in front of you. Right. No beaters to be seen, no flankers to our right or to our left. So here's the waiting position for grouse. Sometimes, of course, you're waiting like this. Uh, grouse drives can come in from two or three miles sometimes ahead of you. And um, very often you can wait for up to an hour before any anything happens. And then suddenly everything happens together. And of course, you want to get yourself ready in this position. Uh, ready to shoot uh, nice and early and um, very often of course instead of two or three grouse coming together you get massive packs of grouse coming forward. Usually later in the season. Later on in the season you get the big packs coming through and uh, I suspect you like I Barry have seen um, massive massive packs of grouse, five or six hundred in a pack um, coming forward and of course picking those birds out can be quite tricky. You pick your bird mm. and this is a perfect opportunity mm. to show how you turn mm. you would take mm. 
perhaps mm -hmm. a bird in front and sometimes where you're caught mm -hmm. by surprise it, you have to take another bird behind yes and when you turn mm -hmm. show how you turn yeah. through the right. line very right. important this one of course as Barry said earlier on you very often got someone in the butt with you be aware where that person is very often uh, an accomplice uh, a wife a spouse or a friend in the back of the butt will be sitting very often it's a good idea to sit and so a grouse taking one in front, maybe at this sort of angle here, and one shot, and there's one not quite going to get onto it in front. You lift the gun up, come back behind onto the left foot, and the shot is taken behind the butt. Very often that grouse, of course, um, again, perfectly safe behind the butt. The pickers up on a grouse more usually weighed about three or 400 yards behind. They need to be that far back, not just because of the, of the uh, danger of being shot, but of course the danger, uh, grass can fly a long way behind the butt, even if they're hit 